welcome. I'd like to welcome you to this time of study. If you would, take your Bibles and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Also turn over to Matthew chapter 26, and we're going to be thinking about the Lord's Supper. Uh, this holy week, there's so much that can be read, so much to be learned, uh, so much to think about as Jesus made his way to the cross to suffer, to believe, and to die in service to God, our Father, and in order that we might have our debt paid and that someday we might be able to be saved from our sins. If you would, take your Bibles and read with me as we think about these thoughts on the Lord's Supper. In the Gospels, we read that Jesus told his disciples several times that he would be arrested, that he would be tortured, and that he would be crucified. In Matthew chapter 26, in verses 1 and 2, we'll read that he, he told them specifically when this was going to happen. And so the time was near. It says in Matthew chapter 26, in verse 1 and verse 2, And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, Ye know that after two days is the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. And so we see that he specifically told them that the time was upon him to suffer and bleed and die for our sins. If you look over into chapter 26, uh, verses 26 through 30, we see that he instituted the Lord's Supper there in the upper room as it had been prepared. It says in verse 26, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, and he told them, Take and eat, for this is my body. And then he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day, when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And verse 30 tells us that when uh, they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. And so as we look at this passage of Scripture, we see that uh, it's an important time. Uh, Jesus was making preparations for the cross, but he was preparing uh, his disciples how to remember him in the days, years, and centuries to come. And so since that time, uh, the Lord's Supper has been a sacred act of worship. So as we come together tonight uh, to uh, remember uh, the Lord, we come as a time of rec recognition. We come as a time of remembrance, a time of reflection. It could be a time of recommitment or a time of rededication. It could be, be, just be a time of readjustment uh, or a time of uh, refreshment or a time of regeneration. But what we want to look, look at tonight is the Lord's Supper truly within us is an outward appreciation of the inward celebration of the love that's been shown to us through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's also a demonstration of our faith. It's also an act of obedience to Christ uh, and His instructions to us. He simply said, This do in remembrance of me. So as we think about these thoughts, when Jesus had finished the supper, uh, that last supper with His disciples, He began uh, a very determined movement towards the cross. Uh, Jesus, it says, he crossed the valley. He went over into the Mount of Olives to a garden area uh, because it was his time. It was his time to be delivered uh, for your sins and for mine. The Scripture teaches us that, that during this prayer time in Gethsemane that Jesus was able to receive strength for the final move to the cross. Uh, facing his own greatest temptation, Jesus said in chapter 26, verse 38 of Matthew, Jesus said to Peter, James, and John, He said, My soul is swallowed up in sorrow to the point of death. He said, Remain here and stay awake with me. And the Scripture teaches us that three times Jesus prayed, Father, if you're willing, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And then we know as the Scripture teaches us in Luke, Luke chapter 22, that an angel came down from heaven and appeared to the Lord Jesus and strengthened Him. And the Scripture says that Jesus being in anguish, He prayed more fervently, and His sweat became like drops of blood falling to the ground. When you think about Jesus' faith, when you think about the things that from those moments forth, the things that He would endure for your sins and for mine, it's humbling to think about what Jesus went through as He suffered as He sacrificed, as He gave His body and His blood for your sins and for mine. We think about His faith. The Scripture teaches us that, that uh, His friends here were apathetic. 
Can you imagine the sorrow and the grief upon the heart of Jesus? Can you imagine as, as he was betrayed by Judas, a, a chosen one, one that rejected him, one that was about to betray him? Can you imagine the scorn of the religious leaders of those days, uh, uh, the religious leaders of God's people? Can you imagine the heaviness upon his heart? Can you imagine in these hours uh, to come the things that was about to transpire upon him, the beatings, the thorns, the nails, the abuse, the ridicule, and the shame? Can you imagine the sorrow and the grief that, that he would feel as people would reject him? And, and, and as, as you think about the hurt and disappointment over Peter, his beloved uh, brother, his close friend, uh, that, that he would deny him three times. But most of all, think about the anguish that Jesus bore because of the thought of being in isolation, being uh, uh, kept from his father, his father literally turning his back upon His Son. Think about how that He became sin for us. The sins of the whole world. He's the Savior of the world. Can you imagine the loneliness that came upon Him due to being deserted by everyone except His mother and the beloved John? Think about how that, that in those hours of suffering and sacrifice that He endured in human flesh, flesh like yours and mine, he endured in human flesh the suffering of all sin because He loved His Father and He loved lost sinners like you and like me. I'm so thankful today to stand before you as one that's been saved by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful to be able to have this time to remember and to reflect and so much more. Think about Jesus. As he went to the cross, the confidence that he had in his Father's resurrection power and plan to be willing to become sin for us, to take all of our sin upon himself and become sin for us. I know that he had to have been eager, even though he wasn't looking forward to the suffering and to the pain of death. But I know that he was eager to, to please his Father. And I know that he was eager to... Uh, to finish His mission, and to go home, to be in heaven with His heavenly Father. Jesus felt many emotions. He suffered many things. And I'm sure more than what we've covered in these few moments together. But as Christians today, let us be intentional to never lose sight of what we have because of God's love for us through Jesus Christ. Remember Jesus the sinless Son of God. As you take your Bibles and turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we read uh, as Paul was able to instruct the Corinthians as, as God had favor upon him and, and gave him a glimpse uh, and, and gave him some instructions to share with the church there at Corinth and, and to the church uh, even today. Picking up in verse 20, it reads, When you come together, therefore, in one place, this is not to eat the Lord's supper, for in eating, everyone taketh before other his own supper. And one is hungry and another is drunken. What, have you not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? In this I praise you not. For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, he also took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and of the blood. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned in the world or with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. 
And if any man hunger, let him eat at home. And then ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. When we think about the Lord's Supper, it's about remembrance. There's so much that we could talk about and dive into in these verses of Scripture, but, but what we want to do tonight, what we want to do in these short moments together is to remember that Jesus Christ is Lord. What we want to do is remember that He prepared a simple meal. It was His provision for the purpose of reminding His own that from then on, his suffering and His sacrifice, His body and His blood was for our redemption. It was to remember Him, to remember the things that He went through so that you and me could find forgiveness of sin through repentance. As we partake uh, of the Lord's Supper, we, as the Scripture says, we declare that Jesus is Lord of life, that He is Lord of death, that He is Lord of the resurrection, that He is, uh, has saving power. And so these are things that as we, would, we remember, we rejoice in these things and we reflect upon these things. And as we read through these verses, we, we remember the Lord's body. Stephen Olford said, we not only recognize the person of Christ and His sacrifice for us, but the purpose of Christ in His sovereignty over us. You see, to know the significance of the Lord's Supper requires personal surrender to His Lordship. As we come together, Unlike ever before, as we come together, this is our covenant. This is our covenant honoring His command. Showing that we agree with God and that we agree with one another and that we celebrate His great love for us. That we remember His sacrifice and His suffering. We remember His service to God and His service, His service to mankind. As we his saints, the redeemed, as we take time to remember, we, we take time to remember and we prepare ourselves to partake. And in order to do that, the Scripture teaches us that we must examine ourselves, that we, we must look deep within ourselves and we must pray. And then He will reveal to us the things that we might have made of confessing and getting right before we partake in the time of remembrance of His body and of His blood. So, as we remember, the Scripture says in verse 24, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and He said, Take and eat, this is My body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of Me. And after the same manner, He also took the cup when He had supped, saying, This is the cup, this is the New Testament in My blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink of it, in remembrance of Me. And so, I pray that you'll take time to remember. And as you remember, you'll reflect upon your own life and where you stand with God. And that as you do this, that the intent of your heart will be to proclaim the Lord's death until He returns. And to make a commitment, or maybe a recommitment, to continue to look forward to the glorious time when Jesus comes and takes us home, let us pray. Jesus, we remember. God, we thank you for a Savior like Jesus. We come today again to worship and adore. We come to rejoice in what you have provided and what Jesus willingly done to see that your plan was fulfilled, that his mission was complete, so that we might be able to be saved. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I would encourage you to take a time to personally pray and make sure that things are in order in your own heart. And I, again, I would encourage you to take this as a time. This is a time for for Christians to remember and to partake of the Lord's Supper. And so it's a time to teach your children or non-Christians, non-believers, uh, of what it symbolizes and what it means and to share uh, your testimony of faith and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. But again, this is a time of remembrance of what the Lord has done. The Lord Jesus, what He's done for us as He went to the cross 
and died. And I'm here to tell you tonight. And I'm so thankful that He lives. That He's risen from the dead. And He is Lord. I encourage you to take a time of remembrance in your homes. Uh, you can do that by taking the Word of God and turning to scriptures like we just read from, from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Uh, I encourage you to do that. Prepare, uh, pray, and then partake. At this time, I want to say a prayer just thanking the Lord for His body that was willingly given that we might have forgiveness of sin. Heavenly Father, I approach Your throne of grace with much love and gratitude. I thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ that you sent to die in my place. I'm so thankful for what your word teaches us. I'm thankful for his body that was bruised, that was chastised, that was afflicted for my sin, the, the anguish and the hurt that he willingly took upon himself so that I could have my debt paid. Lord, we can't thank you enough for what you've done for us. But as we take this time to remember, help us to rejoice in the payment that's been made in the suffering that you willingly took upon yourself. We again thank you for the instructions that you left behind and how to proceed as we live our lives to take time from time to time to remember in this way. Lord, we love you. And we need you. And we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. sacrifice. We thank you that he willingly stayed on the cross and allowed his side to be riven with a spear and thrust up into his heart. Thank you that he willingly poured out his life's blood. He shed it freely for us all. Father, we, we can't thank you enough for that great love. And we just take this time to remember and we take this time also to rejoice. That you loved us so much that you gave us your only son. And that he willingly went to the cross and paid our sin debt. Father, we just thank you again tonight that, that he is alive. That he lives. And that he continues to be our mediator, our intercessor. And that he continues to uh, prepare a place for all those that would repent of their sins. And accept him as Savior and Lord so that we might have a relationship with you. Father, we love you, and we praise you. We adore you. Again, we need you. So help us to remember, and help us to proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
sang a song and that as they went out they went out into the Mount of Olives and so uh, as we close this time of remembrance let us in our hearts and in our homes sing praises unto our Lord. 